Desmond Bain has easily been one of the most unappreciated players I've seen in the last few years. It might be because he isn't a crazy athletic player or because he doesn't have dazzling handles or for whatever other reason someone can conjure up. Desmond Bain for some odd reason isn't given the respect that most NBA great players get and that's pretty odd to me because Desmond Bain provides an immense amount of flexibility and versatility as a second option that most quite frank can't provide so why are a lot of people overlooking Bane especially since not only has he taken a leap from his prior season so far in the 22-23 NBA regular season he's looking like a straight-up star obviously majority of the value that Desmond Bane provides to his team is his ability to be able to shoot the three ball at a ridiculous clip last year Bane shot 43.6 percent from three on 6.9 attempts and he managed to increase that this year to 45.9 percent on 8.5 attempts being able to increase the volume and the amount of threes you take and still managing to also increase the efficiency isn't something most nba players can do bain has only played in 10 games this regular season so naturally you'll question if he'll be able to sustain this production however bain has one thing going for him and that's most don't realize is that he has great shot selection you don't see bain trying to force up most of his looks when he's tightly contested but instead would elect to use pump fakes and step backs and other measures to create some space to shake off the defender to get high quality looks bain goes to set a ghost screen for jaw then he sprints to the corner and as he goes there Adam sets a screen on Simmons which results in a switch and Claxton tries to recover with a hard closeout to try to contest a shot and Bain pump fakes and gets Claxton on his backside does one dribble step back for this very clean three. He brings the ball up the court on this one and passes it to Tyus Jones. He gets a flare screen on the right. Kelly Olynyk is in drop coverage so the play is left all up to Jordan Clarkson to try to get a contest. He recovers well, but all it takes for Bain to create space is a pump fake that gets Clarkson up off his feet, and Bain step backs left to get the space he needed for the three points. Bain's ability to recognize situations when to fake is outright amazing. When he sees his teammate grab the offensive rebound, he immediately shifts more to the top of the key to better position himself to catch the ball and to try to get a shot off as the shot clock is running down. Jalen Brown jumps to try to contest, Bain pump fakes and does one dribble to better square himself to the rim and in one motion drills a very much needed clutch three. Bain's ability to combine great shooting with his off ball movement makes him very hard to game plan for for other NBA teams. Bain rarely just stays put off ball, always moving to try to create better advantages for himself while being very good at coming off multiple screening and dribble handoff actions to create space even better. Brandon Clark calls for the ball to try to initiate and give and go with Bain, but he fakes it and Bain cuts. And to fake out his defender, he jabs left to go right back to Clark to do a dribble handoff. He catches the ball, does a side strap dribble to square himself more to the rim to get the three off. Here, Tyus Jones runs a pick and roll, and Bane defender is on the nail, focusing on the primary action. But when you look at this whole sequence, Bane kept hip hopping to the right to create more space on the court, while also recognizing that his defender was no longer focusing on him to get to a place on the court to get an open look for the triple. Again, Bane is not involved in the initial action, but he makes such great reads off ball that it makes it that he has to be accounted for even when he isn't drawn up in the play. As Bain defenders focused on the pick and roll going on, he relocates to the top of the key and none of the Blazer defenders even communicate to say Bain is moving and he catches the ball and fires to cash in a three. Bain is also very good at backdoor cuts, using the screens and faking the defenders as if he's going to flare out for the three to instead make cuts to the basket to get easy layups and also make slight jabs in the opposite direction to freeze a defender for that one second Bain needs to cut back the other way for the space for the layup. He gets the ball in the corner and after passing it to Clark goes right into a cut 
Now this forces the strong side defender in the corner to come help and Bane displays amazing strength on this drive just shielding the ball and pushing off the Brooklyn defender with his left arm to get the two points with the foul. Now Bane isn't this amazing finisher nor is he a terrible one, he's just a very aware on when he should go all the way to the rim or pull it back for the pull ups. But when he does attack the rim, he's very good at finishing through the contact and still converting the points and has a great way of shielding his body on drives to not get stripped when he goes up. Still, this is an area that still needs improvement and more reps at since still majority of his buckets is coming off ball, but with 70 games left to be played, it's honestly something that shouldn't shock me to see that Bane gets better at throughout the season. Bane being such a prolific shooter and off ball player easily makes him one of the most flexible second options you can have on your team, especially in next to a high motor ball dominant point guard who has a relentless approach at applying pressure to the rim and making reads off that in jaw, Bane could just play within the flow of the offense and get his buckets majority from that creation and effortlessly move off ball to get space for his shots and make quick attacks off the catch, whether that be pulling up for a shot or going all the way to the rim. And as I stated earlier in the video, Bane on ball reps are very limited currently but he's still shown some flashes that he can operate in on-ball sets and still produce very good offense. Especially his pull-up shooting above the breaks and in pick and roll situations, currently Bane is shooting 53.6% on his pull-up shots and 56% on pull-up shots from the three-point line. Bane is going to ask the pick and roll big defender to play higher on screens because if you leave just the first defender to go over to recover on Bane, He's very good at just finding the tiny gaps between the screens to get his three pointers off. So essentially playing drop coverage is a huge gamble to play on Bane since he's such a prolific shooter. On a minimum of 20 possessions and up, Desmond Bane is scoring as the pick and roll ball handler 1.23 points per possessions, which would rank as the fourth best in the league with the likes of Giannis, Steph Curry, and Luka Doncic. And again, not saying this is something that's sustainable, but it's a great indicator so far to see how in those on-ball reps in the pick and roll, Desmond Bain is still killing defenses even when he's operating as the ball handler. While still adding on top of all of that offensive value he provides, he's still a very good defender. Now it might not seem like it, he has a pretty small wingspan in comparison to other NBA players, which actually hurt his draft stock initially since a lot of scouts were worried on his potential as a defender on the pros level and he's only about 6 foot 5. However, in these last two years, Bain has found a way despite these concerns to be a good defender. Bane has surprisingly amazing foot speed on the defensive end and great strength where if you place a quick and shifty guard on him, he can make their nights very tough. Players who are very good at changing directions and quick at finding good angles against defenders have trouble against Bane since he has the strength to stonewall them and bump them off their tracks while still having the speed to quickly cut off those angles and force them into more difficult looks. Although his wingspan does still give him trouble at providing good contests on shots and flyby contests, he more than makes up for that with his ability to be able to keep the ball in front of him while also being very solid off ball, usually always making the right rotations. With Jaron Jackson Jr. being out for the start of the season and many more months of being sidelined for basketball, I and many others started to overlook the Grizzlies and put them down in preseason rankings. But with this emergence of Bane's play, it's having me start to truly rethink if I was looking at this correctly from the start. Bane is taking another leap from what he actually took in the prior season. Not only will he be in most improved conversations, I truly believe that Bane will eventually find himself in all-star conversations if he keeps playing this way. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you guys leave a comment telling me if you think Desmond Bain have a true shot of becoming an all-star or even more so a legit star in this league for the upcoming years. Make sure you guys hit the like button since it helps this video and my channel get recommended more. Also hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to keep you guys posted. And lastly, follow me on Twitter at Dream Hoop so you can keep up with what I'm doing when I'm not on YouTube. And with that all being said, I hope you all have a blessed day.